So, like Lord John, you have no intention of retiring. Politicians rarely retire, sir. Indeed, sometimes they hang on until they have to be carried. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, you know, I'm surprised you didn't accept the appointment as first Viceroy of India. No doubt the government thought of it as an ideal way of removing me from the scene. <laughs> but I shall admit I was tempted. Sumptuous palaces, jeweled potentates, all the riches of the East. And Mrs. Disraeli and I arriving for the Durbar on a gilded elephant. Like a scene from one of my novels. No. No, it would have meant saying goodbye forever to the House of Commons. <laughs> Leave me. My daughter has monopolized you all evening, Mrs. Disraeli. Oh, Her Highness has been most kind, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And what have you been discussing, Alice? Education, Mama. Hmm? I can scarcely believe it, but Mr. Disraeli left school when he was 15. He was never at university. But surely I heard he'd received a degree at Oxford. Oh, yes, but an honorary one, an ADCL, I think. Uh, do you mean a DCL, Mrs. Disraeli, Doctor of Civil Law? Yes, yes, something of the sort. <laughs> If it were permitted for young ladies, I should have liked to have gone to university. Really, Your Royal Highness? Yes, there's nothing I'd like more. Oh, well, that's a very modern idea, my dear. Still, perhaps you... Well, you don't know the benefit of having an affectionate husband. How very true. And were you present at the degree ceremony, Mrs. Disraeli? Oh, yes, I wouldn't have missed it. Dizzy was very apprehensive. You see, he thinks that all students are radicals, but they cheered him louder than anyone. Oh, is that so? And do you attend many functions with your husband, Mrs. Disraeli? Oh, sadly, no. He's so busy. But then you'd understand that, ma'am. <laughs> Too well. You must get him to take you to the exhibition at the British Museum. Yes, it is very fine. So many beautiful things. There was a statue of Apollo which especially impressed me. Absolute perfection of form. Yes, but you should see my dizzy in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Alice, you should not be listening. <laughs> May we know why you are laughing, my dear? <laughs> I couldn't possibly tell you. <laughs> You look more relaxed than I've seen you for weeks. Well, uh, perhaps that is because I have at last met a statesman with unbiased opinions. It is difficult to remain prejudiced in the company of an enlightened prince. Well, we have both in our time been accused of being alien. Hopefully we have now both proved that we have our country's interests at heart. Albert's fever. Yeah. It's typhoid. They can't save him. It 
In your position as leader of the opposition, I beg that you will not bring about any crisis. I feel in, in my present condition, I, I could not survive it. I promise to take no strong action unless it becomes an absolute necessity in the interests of the country. I knew I could depend on you, Mr. Disraeli, as on no other. I must thank you once again for your generous praise of my adored beloved husband. Now, in these conversations with which of late years the prince honored me, I gained a great deal both in knowledge and feeling which will always influence my life. You alone of everyone seem to realize his unequaled worth. How immense the loss has been, both to myself and to the country. And now I feel so alone. Most faithful servant, ma'am. I'm sure you would fill it every night. Oh, we would. And if we ran out of guests, I'd get dizzy to dance with me to dawn, all by ourselves. <laughs> that sounds very exhausting. Oh, not a bit of it. I'm sure it would be for Lady de Rothschild and myself. Oh, fiddlesticks. And I can give you both a hundred years, Lady Chesterfield. <laughs> Still, I'm all energy. When I was a child, my mother used to call me Wizzy, little Wizzy. How fortunate I wasn't christened that. Otherwise, I'd be Mrs. Wizzy Dizzy. <laughs> Gladstone has officially joined the Liberals. Well, my information is that Palmerston offered to make him Chancellor of the Exchequer. And the Rothschild Information Service is more reliable than a government dispatch, Edward. He is the last person I would have expected to desert his principles and his friends. I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner. Why? The Liberal leaders are old men. So, one day soon, he can expect to take their place. Whereas, with us, he would always be second to you. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but however much I may agree with you, I don't think this is a subject we should be discussing. Your pardon, Baron, I had forgotten. You must allow me to observe. The fact that you are a radical seems at times... Uh, 